look at that. We got the commercial one here. Eitosa. I've seen this before, this control. I've definitely worked on this one in the past. So they say it's 42. Set at 34, not keeping the temperature. Um, the fan should be spinning. Look at that condenser fan not spinning. For you guys that have commercial refrigerators, this one's probably pretty expensive. Probably like three grand or something. Yeah, this model number. I'm gonna take this apart, check if I get the power to the to the fan. If I do, I need the new it. fan motor. Okay, spoke too soon. So the fan is, I guess, spinning. If you press the door button, the light goes out. The fan is working. Okay, what else can we check? Um, let's go back. A little compressor right there. A little guy. The condenser fan. That's spinning. The condenser, one of these fans not working. I'm not going to move properly. Compressor running probably all the time. There's a valve there. You can check the pressure on this guy. High pressure line. It's the, the thicker one, the skinny one. It's not very hot, so probably low on 3 on. Yeah, running. Compressor is not super hot. Sometimes when they run really long time, they get really hot. The high pressure line, if you hold it for like 10 seconds, you start burning your fingers. And it's not. It does have a slight weird vibration to it. So it might be the shot. So I'm gonna bring my gauges, check the, check the pressure. This one's a nice and accessible. Yeah. Mm. So hopefully it uh, just needs Freon and uh, it'll work again. Okay, we got a... Line connected. There's no valve. It's just, uh, that's why I have to install the valve. I wonder if I'm already placed the compressor on this. Installed the valve. The uh, right away we see it's uh, in the vacuum so yeah definitely we low and it's dropping and it's kind of moving that's not the best thing it's going up and down, I think the compressor could be going. Sometimes the free end settles in the line when you hook it up the first time. Uh, if you want to charge it, it would be a good thing to flip the tank upside down so it's charged liquid. Uh, I think we should try charging it, definitely. Yeah, definitely in the vacuum, so we're gonna... Okay, we are rising in temperature because we have been opening it up quite a bit. Let's see what is it blowing, 53? Yeah, not looking good. Okay, so we got the center port hooked up to the tank. Uh, we need to get rid of the air, which usually you just um, open up the valve a little bit and let this line fill up and then you screw that thing all the way on and you get the air out of the line just so it's filled up with Freon but yeah this thing is all over the place I think a compressor is shot I put very very little Freon in it and it's it went up It has a, a weird vibration. It doesn't sound bad though. Just putting a little bit of a time, let the free unsettle. I'm gonna keep watching, but um, yeah, if you have it in vacuum, 10, 20 pounds, you know, it's too low. 
Um, how do you know what kind of Freon that is? Right here, 134A refrigerant. You do need to be EPA certified to, uh, to handle Freon correctly and charge the system. So I don't recommend to do it on your own, but, but it can be done. Uh, as long as you're not letting a refrigerant into the atmosphere, that's the main concern. Recovering refrigerant, replacing compressors, it's a lot more involved than just adding a little bit of Freon to the system. So, yeah, when I came, it was negative 20 in the vacuum. Now it's 5, which is supposed to be between 3 and 5 pounds. We know right, the Renault compressor is running good. So. so I didn't get a chance to finish filming the whole process, but uh, after running the refrigerator another 20 minutes, the pressure stayed the same and uh, the temperature started dropping. and. Uh, and so far I haven't got a call back so assume it's fixed but uh, yeah with the free and refills it could be tricky sometimes since you um, if you haven't done enough of those you might be wondering if it's filling or not filling uh, you can see the pressure drop and go up and down so sometimes it's good just to have the gauges hooked up let it settle down and keep running uh, and then see if the if this if it stays the same and of course when the compressor shuts off then the pressure starts rising up because it's not pumping free on so but yeah um, some of these free on refills can last for a while but sometimes you fill it up and a month or two later uh, you need to fill it up again and again and especially if you come to a job and you see already the valve is on the compressor that means it's been been filled up in the past so most likely it's not a permanent fix so and uh, and if it's been running a long time without the Freon there's a chance that the compressor seal is going out and compressor itself is bad so if you're running the compressor and uh, you know you have negative vacuum and all of a sudden it jumps to like 10 20 pounds you know the seal just gave out and the compressor is spinning free and it's not pumping free on the, in that case it's a um, bad compressor for sure so I've seen that once in a while but I get a lot of success with um, especially older fridges where they don't have any valves on at all and uh, just slowly building up a block of ice in the corner on the evaporator then you know that there's not enough Freon to, to freeze the whole evaporator and then uh, and a defrost cycle doesn't start so that block is keeps growing and uh, over time starts bulging even on the outside of the panel those are the best free on repair jobs you know definitely that it's gonna be very slow leak over time and uh, when you put a valve on it's gonna probably gonna gonna keep the free on pressure for for a while so well I hope that video is helpful I'll try to take some more and uh, yeah, good luck with your repairs, guys.